last time on Dual Destinies. In case you missed anything, let's fill you in on this case. All is not well at Themis Legal Academy, where people will use any means necessary to get what they want. We tripped over a sleazy snake in the grass, but Apollo was able to pierce her cardboard cloak of lies. Gotcha! Could a fellow student have it out for Juniper? And are her important friendships really on the rocks? Find out on Dual Destinies, next! My grades are outstanding, and I'm the ace of the archery club. Needless to say, I never miss my mark. Oh, and I'm incredibly humble, too. How can he even say that with a straight face? Those around me call me a genius, but I pay them no mind. But when it comes to tests... I always get a hundred percent, so I suppose it's only natural for them to say I'm a genius. But as I said before, I pay them no mind. I heard you the first time. What about the mock trial? It sounded like you were about to lose to Robin. <laughs> There's a very good reason for that. You see, right before the mock trial started, I saw the body. You saw the body? Right, and I was so distraught that I basically handed Robin a victory. Hugh, would you mind telling us a little more about that? Right before the mock trial, the campus was empty. Everyone was here in the lecture hall. Attention, please. This is an announcement from the Mock Trial Committee. The Mock Trial will begin shortly. All students and faculty, please proceed at once to the lecture hall. That's right. There was that announcement and then everyone came in here. The only exceptions were the Mock Trial participants. Juniper, Robin, and I were in our personal dressing rooms next door. Wow, your own personal dressing rooms? That's total VIP treatment. Actually, they're for student-teacher meetings. They don't even have windows. The other two waited patiently in their rooms. But that's not my style. So, I headed over to the archery range on the other side of the quad. I did some meditation while I waited. That's the best way to relax. Then, just before the mock trial was to start, I headed back toward the main building. As I walked across the quad, I passed in front of the stage. So that's when you saw the body? Right. It was quite a shock. As much as I hate to admit it, my legs were shaking. I could have easily beaten Robin if it hadn't been for that. Wait, hold it right there. You went through the mock trial even though you had just discovered a body? Why didn't you tell anyone? I mean, we're talking about somebody getting killed here! I think I know why. Was it because of this? Ah! Where'd you get that? So, this article in the Themis Herald is true. The winner of the mock trial would get to make his confession to Junie. Right, but if I reported the body I'd found, the whole thing would be called off. He really wanted to win that bad? Bad enough to ignore a dead body? Sorry, but that's not normal. Or could their love for Junie really be that strong? Huh, well, thanks for sharing that important piece of information with us. It may prove useful to tomorrow's trial. Good, because that's all I have to say about the matter. Thanks, and don't worry. We'll prove Juniper's innocence. You'll see. <laughs> I can't say you two inspire much confidence. Okay, Athena, what's next? Oh, uh, hi boss. Have you not moved from this hallway the entire time? Okay, anyway, we, we gotta go. Later. 
Oh, hell no. I am not talking to Blockhead again. Uh, Athena, get us out of here, please. Please, now! So this is the maintenance area. Let's see. During the mock mock trial, Prosecutor Gavin said... that the art room is right above here on the third floor. And that the body was dropped from there onto a high jump mat from the storehouse. Right. Then he claimed that the body was transported to the stage in a ball cart. And then, huh? Uh, there's someone else here. Hey, it's Robin! Whoa! You scared the crud out of me! Yikes. Right back at you. So, uh, what are you doing out here? I'm working out so that I can become strong enough to save Juniper! But I'm so worked up, my training brace is almost breaking at the seams! Oh, right. The girl you like got arrested, so you're psyching yourself up to rescue her? Yes! Because I'm the manliest of manly men! That's why I work out with my manly brace! Except that I hear some discord in that manliest of men's voice of yours. I don't mean to be rude, but can't you talk without shouting? Sorry! I'll try not to shout so much! If at all possible, that is! Which is not at all possible by the sound of it. Um, so do you mind if I ask you some questions as Junie's lawyer? No problem! Ask away! Keep them coming, man! Ouch. My ears ache already. Robin, could you tell me a little more about yourself? You want to know about me? I'm a second-rate member of the Fine Arts Club! The Fine Arts Club? Looks like broken pottery or plaster. Maybe this is the source of that noise we heard. Hmm. There were supposedly two statues on this stage. I seem to recall hearing that a co-ed from the Fine Art Club had made them. The two big banners and a pair of wicked statues. This is just an illustration, but it's not half bad. Wicked statues? Wait. Are those supposed to be you and Mr. Wright? Bingo, Fräulein! Hans, if are so big and magnificent, too! Ah, what a terrible waste. Say, did you create those stage statues by any chance? You bet I did! Both of them! Put my blood, sweat, and tears into those things, man! It must have been terrible seeing them all smashed up like that. Nah! I couldn't face Professor Cord if I let something like that get me down! What do you mean? Professor Cord was the Fine Arts Club advisor. She was all about truth and beauty, man! She always said, the only good result is the truth. Th that end. Only lawyers who seek the truth through legitimate means produce worthwhile results! Yes! I'm totally on your guys' side. She must have been an incredible woman. Yeesh, and you call me loud when I practice my chords of steel. Oh man! Why'd I have to take the prosecutor course? I mean, how am I supposed to save Juniper if I'm studying to be a prosecutor? Don't worry. I'll clear Ginny's name. You'll see. The three of us had a dream. We swore we'd make it happen together! Prosecutor, lawyer, judge! The three of us would hold fair and honest trials! The dark age of the law? HA! We were gonna put a nail in its coffin, man! Wow, you guys swore to do that? But no! That stupid school rule had to ruin it! School rule? Which one? Anyone with a prior conviction, no matter how minor the offense, they won't... They won't be allowed to graduate from this stupid, holier-than-thou school! A tough legal academy with even tougher rules. Junie will never become a judge unless I can prove her innocence. 
And if I fail, the three of them will never realize their dream. It's like someone put pressure on my pressure. Well, I think I've talked to everyone who is somehow linked to the case. Okay, maybe it's about time we wrapped up our investigation. Oh, wait. We haven't met with Junie yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's head over to the detention center. Athena, thank you so much for coming. She called me Athena like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her guard down. Junie, the crime's unfolding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And the only people who knew the details were Professor Court and I. Hmm, nothing we haven't heard already so far. However... Yes? What is it, Junie? Well, there was this... One article in the school paper, to put it politely. You mean this one? <laughs> it's more like a tabloid piece than a newspaper article, if you ask me. I agree, but I've been worried that the trial would wreck the friendship between Rob and Hugh and me. She wants to stay friends, but both of the guys are hoping to take it to the next mm. level. Oh, the passion of high school drama. Wish I could have experienced it. And I know I shouldn't have, but I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Ah, so if Robin had won, he wouldn't have been able to confess his love to Junie. That would have kept the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Junie could be so devious. Hmm. Sorry. I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help in court, huh? Hey, you never know. Help often comes from the most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. I was wondering about that all you had on you when you were arrested. Detective Fulbright, we found this in the suspect's pocket. Hmm? Why, there's... there's blood on this! That's evidence we made for the mock trial! A mock trial? Never heard of such a thing, but it sounds fishy to me. Real fishy! It was the murder weapon from the mock trial. And Professor Cord and I were prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it on me until I was arrested. Then we have nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any way to link it to the crime. Still, that blood red color on the all bothers me. Wasn't it just paint or something? I mean, I was looking at it from pretty far away, but... It probably was just paint, but that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the all when we were prepping it yesterday. Wasn't? Then how and when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Theena and Mr. Wright to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key and the all with what looked like blood on it. A key? And the all? Professor Court normally has the art room key, since she's the Fine Arts Club's advisor. And since that key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the old to look like it had blood on it. After all, she always insisted that the props should be realistic, so... <clears throat> the all suddenly shows up on the day of the trial with what looks like blood on it? I have a really bad feeling about this. You and Professor Court were busy preparing for the mock trial yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Yes. I left school at around 6 p.m. Did you notice anything different about her? 
No, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. <laughs> it looks like we're about out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. We'll do everything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know. And I believe in you, Athena. Well, I should go now. Bye. She gonna be alright? She's like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The Junie I knew was always like that. A little weak and sickly. But the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still... What is it? Well, when Junie and her two friends were talking about their friendship... I sent some discord in their hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. I might have been mistaken. There's no reason to doubt their friendship. Is there? Don't worry, everything will be fine. You and Juniper are friends, right? You know that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Well, get this. Whenever something's troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and concentrate on the trial. Yep, tomorrow's the big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. The victim, Professor Constance Court, was murdered in the art room on the third floor. Then, her body was moved to the outdoor stage in the quad. Also, the location where we found the body was just as the mock trial script described. I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script and this case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows the actual trial may very well unfold just like the mock trial did. Oh no! The mock trial ended right before the prosecution was about to win! Well, that's not gonna happen. This time, Junie will be declared not guilty. We can do this. We'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo, and he's the king of being fine. Ugh, my butterflies have butterflies in their stomach. So, what's it like having your very own case for the first time? My heart hasn't raced this fast since I ran that full marathon last year. <laughs> if it keeps up, you might get a lawyer's high. You know, like a runner's high? Get it? No? Relax, champ. Everyone's nervous their first time. I know I was. So, my fears weren't unfounded. After all, today's prosecutor is so terribly brutal and willing to use any means necessary to win a conviction. There's that the end justifies the means concept again. Now that it has come to this... Hmm. We have no choice but to fight fire with fire. The ends justify the means. I wish you'd stop saying that. That's your method, Professor. I'm going to defend Juniper in my own way. But Miss Sykes, just yesterday you told me, as a lawyer, what is it that you treasure beyond all else? <laughs> That's an easy one, Professor. Seeking justice for my clients. But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen then, won't I? My, but aren't you the stubborn one? Well, I suppose you will have to learn of your own inefficacy the hard way. Forgive me, Professor Maines, but can we just leave it at that? Oh dear, please forgive me. It's just, I wish to protect Juniper by any means I can. I do too, but... <clears throat> now, if you would excuse me. 
thanks to him, I'm feeling even more pressure than before. Ah, don't let it get to you, Athena. And don't forget to keep smiling. <laughs> I'll be fine. And I haven't forgotten what Mr. Wright said. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Me, the trial is about to begin. I'll show you to the courtroom if you please. Well, it looks like it's showtime, team. Apollo, I'm counting on you to support Athena this time. Okay, Mr. Wright. Leave it to me. That's right. I have Apollo to back me up. Junie's fate rests in my hands. I won't rest until she walks free. Alright, champ. Good luck. Senors and senoritas! All eyes for senor beardness! Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. Uh, Athena Sykes, the defense team leader is ready, Your Honor. That didn't sound very confident. You sure you're okay? I'll... I'll be fine. Your bold news? I know, I know. As usual, you want me to deliver the opening statement. Ah! This case is crystal clear. I see no need to explicate it any further. Now, summon the witness. <laughs> is there something the matter? Please do share your boldness. Whatever gave you that idea? Bailiff, please call the first witness. And now we don't even get an opening statement? That's me! Oh, hi, doggy! Detective Fulbright. He and Prosecutor Blackwell have become quite the team. All right, the case brief. Leave it to me. Yes, let the detective in charge, everyone's favorite friend of justice, explain. What was that just now? It's like he and Blackwell are totally in sync. Well, I don't think they're capable of mind melding, if that's what you're thinking. All right, Detective Fulbright, would you please explain the case to the court? Professor Court's body was discovered on October 24th at approximately 2.30 p.m. She was murdered with this all I have here. The victim's blood and the defendant's prints were both discovered on it. Wow, that bird can deliver evidence too. Blackwell has trained him well. Maybe Blackwell should train it not to mess up people's hair while he's at it. Moving right along. The body was discovered on the outdoor stage, although no blood was found there. However, we detected traces of a massive amount of blood in the third floor art room. In short, the murder took place in the art room. So, then the body had been moved from the art room to the stage. Precisely! And there is one more piece of irrefutable evidence! A recording made by a tape recorder that a school paper reporter hid in the art room. It captured a female voice screaming, You're a goner! What's this? You have such a recording? must be from that tape recorder Miriam mentioned. But why is this the first time we've heard of a death threat at the moment of the murder? Shh! Silence, please! I would like to play the tape for you now. <laughs> huh. It is quite hard to hear. But the voice does sound female. The noise and the low volume of the voice have made voice print analysis all but impossible. 
Then you haven't identified the voices belonging to the defendant. Ah, uh, not so fast. After all, voice pin analysis isn't everything. The victim was killed at night, then discovered in the afternoon the next day. The question is, when was the body moved? Hmm. Oh, I know. It could have been moved in the middle of the night when no one was around. Sorry, but no. The campus was full of students that morning. However, no one reported seeing a body. That means the body was moved sometime before the mock trial when all of the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall and the rest of the campus was empty. It was during this time Hugh O'Connor, one of the mock trial participants, found the body. So, the prosecution heard about Hugh seeing the body. Wait one moment. If all of the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall, uh, then there wouldn't have been anyone who could have moved the body. Ha ha ha! Have no fear, for there is always an exception. An exception? The three mock trial participants were standing by in individual dressing rooms. They were the only ones who had free access to the deserted campus before the mock trial. What? Uh, then that would mean... Uh, what would that mean? Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. In justice, we trust! Uh, I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me neither. And by those three, I mean... Hugh O'Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods. I knew it. Please, Detective Fulbright, don't say what I think you're about to say. Injustice we trust! I take it everyone understands now! The voice believed to be that of the murderer was female! And out of the three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. That leaves the defendant, Juniper Woods, as the only possibility! Impressive. He has you on the ropes even before cross-examinations. Let's go. Project. Project.